<laughs> when, when you guys finally get his EQ, the high end knob is like, oh my God, I've tried for years to sound like Manny on the mm -hmm. high end. And it's just right there on that knob on his new EQ. That's a monster EQ, actually. That, that's not, that we don't talk about what is happening, yeah. but I'll keep the, the okay. answer short. <laughs> Today, we're gonna talk about one of the most underrated EQ plugins, and that's the Manny Marikin Signature Series EQ. Now, being such an accomplished and experienced engineer, Manny found himself using certain hardware EQs for different frequencies and sounds in his mixes. So he created this unique EQ plugin where each selected frequency is modeled after one of his favorite hardware EQs. How cool would it be if I take every sort of go-to piece of gear in my room and specifically every frequency that I do because I know I like the top end from the Avalon. I know I like the mid from this one and the low end from that one. What if I create a like a, a an EQ on steroids, right? So every frequency is a different band of a, a piece of gear in my room. Right. So that's what that EQ is. This is very useful to people who are mixing inside the box because it gives you access to a variety of expensive and very sought after pieces of equipment. And it also takes away some of the guesswork as far as which EQ is going to get the job done best because Manny has selected his favorites from over the years. So taking a look at the plugin over here on the left side, we have a high pass filter. And then over here on the right, we have a low pass filter. And these are both modeled after, I believe, the SSL 9080K desk. Next, you have the low frequency knob and you can select between 50 Hertz, 110, 140, 220, and 250. And the frequencies on this knob are modeled either after the Quad 8 or the Neve 1073. It depends on the specific frequency that you choose. So for instance, if you set it at 110 right here, this is going to be emulating the Need 1073. Manny mentions that he loves using the Need 1073 on his kick drum. You no, know, I think I've used the 1073 on 80 percent of my mixes. What do you set the low end button on? You know, I I, I don't even look at it. It's behind me. I, I just <laughs> I just go between 60, 110, whatever. whatever I think you know. he's lying. Here. And of course, for each frequency band, you have a gain knob right above it where you can either cut or you can boost that frequency. Moving on, we have the low mid knob and this controls all the way from 250 Hertz up to 1.5 K Hertz. And the frequencies on this knob are modeling after the quad A or the Motown EQ. Next, we have frequency knob number three. This is gonna control the mids and the high mids and it's gonna go from 800 Hertz all the way up to 8,000 Hertz. And these frequencies are modeled after the Motown EQ, the Neve 1073 or the API 550B. And then lastly, we have frequency knob number four. This is going to control all of the higher end frequencies from 10,000 hertz all the way up to 25,000 hertz. All of the selected frequencies on this band are going to be modeling after the Avalon 2055 EQ. Manny has mentioned that he loves how the higher frequencies on this EQ sound. Avalon 2055, and I yeah. love the top end on that, right? Now, for this frequency knob specifically, you can change it from a bell curve to a high shelf curve, utilizing this switch underneath the frequency knob. The plugin also has your standard input and output knobs to control your gain staging as needed. Let me go ahead and show you what this thing sounds like on a lead vocal. Early morning, the storm is coming, the earth is calm as you lay beside me in this moment shared together. I got no place to be but here with you in this dream as we proceed to leave our past on the horizon. Staring down the hourglass as this day passes by, this world is moving fast, so oh, baby let's take our time. The rain is falling as the clouds make their way through. Champagne colors dawning as the leaves change colors too. Ooh, ooh, just wasting time with you. Ooh, ooh. 
Okay, so I think that's sounding pretty nice right there. And I thought that the high shelf boost at 12.5K really brightened things up, but not in a harsh way. And that's really what the Avalon EQ is known for. I used the high pass filter um, to kind of roll off everything below 80 hertz to clean up the recording. Down here at 110 hertz, I bumped the low end just a bit to kind of bring out some of the chest in the vocal. Here at 250, I scooped out some of that boominess and muddiness that comes from the vocal recording in the room. And then also I took out a little right here at 800 hertz. Now I'll be honest, for removing frequencies, I tend to use a more modern style EQ to be more surgical and precise, but I really love using vintage style EQs like this one when I go to boost frequencies because of the analog character that you get from the hardware emulation. And that's really what I use this plugin for is when I want more of something as far as a frequency goes. The next thing I wanna demonstrate this thing on is an acoustic guitar. All right, so that guitar is sounding pretty nice and the high pass filter really did wonders. And again, that high end boost up here at 12.5K really brought out the brightness of the acoustic guitar. A little boost here at 3.2K kind of made the guitar more prominent in the upper mids. Let me play the guitar again and I'll bypass the plugin on and off. Okay, so overall, I just think that this is such a unique plugin and I wanted to share it with you all because a lot of what's going on behind the scenes as far as the analog emulations and modeling goes with each frequency band, it's not something that a lot of people know about. Most people would just look at this thing as another EQ plugin and so I just wanted to share some of the capabilities that it has. It is an older plugin that I recently stumbled upon after watching one of Manny's interviews and I've just been trying to incorporate it into my mixes ever since. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the content. Please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.